What do you think the philosophers were pondering, you know, the nature of things? They're not pondering, you know, the outcomes of the world, they were pondering, you know, what makes something exist? I mean, that's Plato, you go back and you read some of the ancient Greeks, you know. One thing, I think it was Plato pondered, he, he said, if, if there was no such thing as a color, um, like the color red, could you have a red object if there was no color red? This is the kind of questions <laughs> that they would sit around in the pools. And actually I always encourage that. I mean, people nowadays, they think, they say, be practical David, you know, can you give us any practical advice? This is all really deep stuff. And I said, well, relax, uh, enjoy, and, and allow time to be used by the Holy Spirit in your day to ponder the deeper things. Uh, the Greeks did it. I mean, they, they just had these pools and they were just these nice warm pools that they would sit around in all day long. And, and people, what about a lazy bunch of guys and everything? No, actually if you... Bathtubs. Bathtubs. <laughs> <laughs> go for the bathtub. When you read the, the ancient Greeks, there's a lot of deep, deep wisdom there. Where did it come from? They must have allowed themselves to loaf. To, to loaf, right, like in Razor's Edge, you know. They must have allowed themselves loaf time. They must have not taken everything so seriously and relaxed enough to be able to spend that many hours in the pool, you know. What wonderful thing. And I tell people today, if, if people would start pooling together with their resources, it's so funny to me with everybody's going to have separate houses, separate TVs, separate cars, separate silverware, I mean, separate everything, if they would just start pooling together some of their resources, then they could live much simpler, and they would have time to ponder the depths, the, the mysteries of the world, and actually discover them together, discover the answer. But it's this crazy idea that you have to own everything. I don't, I'm not big on ownership. I mean, I, I tell people in a practical way, I think, the ones that say share, you know, this this is always, here we are, we've come together to share these villas and share this time and this experience together and I think that's wonderful. It's a beautiful experiment in in kind of having a, an encounter group like the 60s. And Jason was saying to me, you know, several weeks ago, he was saying, how are you going to organize Mallorca? And I just laughed and I said, I don't. I don't have that question. I'm, I do not plan on organizing it. I said there's certainly some practicalities and, and Jenny would, would be using this for mind training and, and we want to save time and make it as, as enjoyable experience as possible. But he said, well, what, what, aren't you going to do anything to, to like organize the experience? And I said, it's, no, it's like, a, it's like a month long encounter group and I'm just going to really enjoy it to the fullest. And, and besides, that's all I'm doing everywhere else in the world, so why should this be any special or different? <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing in Paris, the same thing in Belgium, the same thing in Las Vegas or wherever, Australia, you know. And because it's all a dream, why make something special or some time frame any different than the rest, you know? I don't want to do that. I, and I do enjoy, I mean, that's at one point we did end up finally getting, uh, we had no tub at the Peace House for years, so we ended up getting a hot tub. Oh my gosh, if we had a video recorder in that hot tub, you wouldn't believe the stuff. It was just, but it was fun. You know, when you're in a, a relaxing, warm bath, and you can just meditate and share whatever's coming up, um, and just, sink into the bliss, you know, it's, it's for the whole universe, it's not like you're trying to escape anything, you're actually, you know, healing your mind and healing the whole universe in doing that, so. I have a story that came to mind, the ego that I watched at Hallmark I think, at TV, this, this Merlin and this story with the white and black witch I think it is, 
and in the end, the Black Wiz, she, they have no way of beating her, like, she has all the power. But then they realize that they just turn their back on her and say, well, now we're really just gonna forget you. Oh, no, you can't do this. <laughs> no, no, no. And they just turn their backs and, and walk out and she disappears. Yeah, that's good. So, like, that's the ego thing. That's good, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, forgetting you the ego would have us forget God and then you turn the tables on the ego and you go, oh, I'm now I'm gonna forget you and your world. <laughs> and you know and that's the beauty of it. I, you actually can can use forgetting in a helpful way. And that's what it says in Lesson one eighty nine, forget this world, forget this course and come with open arms unto your God. Yeah, that's that's what I call, that's the kind of forgetting I can get into it. If, if I had amnesia about God, I'm going to turn the tables on the ego. I'll forget you, ego, and your whole world, and I'll remember God. Wow, is that simple? Turning it around, you know, just flipping it all around and, yeah, and have fun with it. I mean, I've always, I think spirituality should be fun. I really do have fun. I mean, it, there were times when the ego was reacting and resisting that didn't feel very fun at all, but then I saw that that was just like a clinging, a holding on, like afraid of letting go of something. But then, once I started to get more comfortable and trusting to let go, I thought, oh, now this is fun. And this is the way, it's, I always tell people spirituality should be really fun. And if you're not having fun, you should just change, change your spirituality, <laughs> just chuck it. It doesn't matter, you've worked on it for 25 years, you're still not having fun, <laughs> then chuck it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, I have invested so much time in my spirit and practice, I cannot turn now. <laughs> Yeah. I think some of the best advice we can get is really to go and live life. To just go and live. Yeah. And, and not study, not just meet whatever is coming, whatever we meeting. And take the blue books and put it in a box, store it in the garage and come back whenever you feel guided to come back. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. When I was in Colombia one time, I went to a coffee farm in rural Colombia and this lady had a Course in Miracles group there and they were all sitting around, all these students pondering. And then she started talking about this, this worker on her farm who was probably like in his thirties, but he had never been off the coffee farm. He'd never been to a city. He just, he lived and worked. He grew up on the coffee farm and he lived and worked on this coffee farm his whole life. He really never left the coffee farm. And she went on to say how happy he was. She, she, he was the happiest man that she had ever met in her whole life. So everyone was like listening, following, following, and then she said, Now, my question is, does this man need a Course in Miracles? And I didn't have to say anything. Her whole course group in unison went, No! <laughs> Keep the book away from him! <laughs> you know? Because everybody had the recognition that that happiness is the end and that, you know, as Helen Schuckman said, you know, she said, finally a path for intellectuals. And I've said it all along, that the majority of the people in this world, of the six billion, are not intellectuals. Actually, the intellectuals are a tiny minority. And so they have a pathway too now, so they can be grateful for it. But to not presume that there's anything special about a blue book, you know, with a bunch of, with 1200 some pages of words, you know. Don't spiritualize it and start to make it into something, you know, some teachers say, don't let it touch the ground and all this stuff, you know, it's like, oh please, let's not get into doing the same things with a book, you know, that had been done for centuries with, you know, different symbols. <laughs>